What's up YouTube, Jeff Bag again. Today, another very exciting Samsung video for you guys. Today, I've had about a week with One UI 6.0 Beta 1, and I wanna talk about the top seven features, at least the top seven features that I think are gonna be important for the everyday daily user. This is not necessarily targeted us enthusiasts. These are the big changes that people are gonna notice when they get the stable version, which will probably happen sometime in October. Before we get started, I do wanna thank my son, Jonathan. He gave me a couple of sea creatures to hang out. He loves dinos, but he also loves sea creatures. We got a blue shark and a gray blue humpback whale over here. We appreciate that. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you sign up for my newsletter over my website. I'll drop the link below. Uh, we have really cool stuff that's targeted by phone model. Um, lots of cool giveaways like the mystery boxes we do at the pre-order launch um, and other cool stuff about customization wallpapers, some free codes from my friend um, at 1-4 Studio, sometimes given out for his wallpaper and icon packs. So check out the newsletter, sign up. Uh, we don't send out millions of emails every week, but we try to send them out regularly enough. You guys keep, you know, getting up to date with the latest Samsung news and any promotions that we have going on on the channel. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, the very first one is probably something that we might not think about too much as enthusiasts, but um, it's emojis. And so if you go in here, we've got all new emojis here for One UI 6.0 beta based on Android 14. Um, I think they look a little better. Some people aren't the biggest fan of them, but I've kind of liked them quite a bit. Um, I think they look pretty nice. They definitely are a change. They might be a little closer to the Windows emojis, I guess, if you're a Windows user. Um, but overall, I think Samsung's at least made an effort to revamp these a little bit. They're getting a little bit long in the tooth, a little bit stale. Um, you've also have some new ways to create Bitmojis, of course, because the emojis have changed and some other changes from within the emoji screen. Um, but, you know, I think most people think Samsung had the worst emojis for a long time and they did update that and change it. And I think most everyday average users will be really happy with that. And it might actually be one of the biggest changes that your normal user would notice when they do get the One UI 6.0 stable version in October. The next thing is another one where it's like if you're an enthusiast Samsung user, are you really going to notice this too much? Probably not, but if you're the everyday average user, one widget and app that you might use more than any other one would be the weather widget and the weather app. Because of course, everybody wants to know the weather every day when you're using your phone. And a lot of people add a weather widget to their home screen. And not only has we've got a couple new widgets here in One UI 6.0 Beta 1, but the app itself has been redesigned to have a lot less spam. It's got some new animations. The old videos that used to like autoplay, those have now been hidden at the very bottom. These used to be prominently displayed like at the top, right below where the map was, and that's no longer the case. So you don't have to worry about kind of being recommended to see these videos about different types of weather in your area or even really weird stuff like alligator thinks it's a squirrel, stuff that I never really wanted to watch. So, you know, users who do use their phone every day, but they're not necessarily phone enthusiasts, probably will notice um, this new widget, probably will notice the new redesign of the weather app and I think it's for the better overall. The third one is one that is definitely the most noticeable of any of the changes in One UI 6.0, but I've talked about it so much in my other videos that I saved it for my third point here, and that is the new redesigned quick settings. Um, this is very polarizing among Samsung enthusiasts. I personally am getting used to it after using it now for about a week, and I really do like it, um, but it's definitely a big departure from One UI 5.1, and uh, you know it's a very different layout. It kind of looks like Apple, kind of looks like uh, Xiaomi layout, but I kind of like it. And you still got access to all your quick toggles, everything you can still edit here at the top. In fact, you can even get rid of some of these options at the bottom, like device control and media output buttons there. And the really nice thing is you do have the quick settings access. So that if you turn this on, you can still swipe down and get the whole thing. If you swipe down from the diagonal uh, upper right corner in a diagonal stroke, you do expand your entire quick panel at one time instead of having to do this two kind of expansion with two different swipes to get the whole panel. So I think Samsung did a great job here. I just don't think there's a lot of unused space here that could probably be used a little better. Um, there's some empty space, and I don't know if it's really the most one-handed friendly UI. Um, they could still keep this layout, but make a few changes um, to some of this you know, empty space there and improve things in the next version. Uh, the next thing is better camera controls, toggles, whatever you want to call them. Um, they kind of change the way a lot of things are laid out over here. When you're in photo mode, you've got all of your different resolutions. 
when you're in video mode, you also have the same thing over here. Uh, and they just made it a lot more readable, a lot cleaner, and you can kind of see everything in a nice way. Now, the next thing which they did is they actually added a new feature to the camera. So all these camera ones are kind of together here um, inside the camera app itself. If you go into the settings on photo mode, you'll notice that there's this new option called advanced intelligence options. This allows you to basically um, slow up or speed up the amount of post-processing that's done in order to change how fast you capture your photos. So this is a new feature and I think it's a really good one. It might not be something that people notice, you know, right when they download the new update, but I think if they use it and see that they have this choice in different situations, people really like that. And obviously the new camera icons, new animations, and some of the other things that make it more readable will be a big deal to a lot of people. Uh, the next thing is the camera widget. We also have a newly designed camera widget. If you go to the settings, well, of course I went to the wrong spot. If you go to widgets and scroll down to camera, there's a new camera widget which I talked about in the previous version. If you do add the camera widget here, you can basically determine what it does. You can take a rear photo, a rear video, a front photo, front video, whatever you want. You can change the widget background where it's saved to. Um, all that various good stuff right there can, can be kind of how you determine where you want to save it, etc. So and once you save it, adds the widget, and then you can launch that particular mode directly from the widget. Um, I hope that people who use widgets will notice this. It's certainly a nice widget to add. It's something that probably should have been there before because it's very basic functionality, but it's definitely a welcome change as well. The next one is Chromecast screen sharing. I hope that this will make its way to being a little more prominent in the stable version, but if you go down here to your settings, go to Smart View, and you go into Smart View Settings, you'll notice here in the Settings menu that under Labs, we now have the ability for Chromecast support. So Smart View can mirror your screen to a Chromecast device. This is something that people have asked for for a while, and it's not just really enthusiasts that use Chromecast. Chromecast is such a kind of widespread general audience product now because there's so many Chromecast devices that are out there, and uh, I think a lot of people will be really happy with this. Now, of course, it's in labs right now, so not that many people would necessarily see it. Um, when they do get the stable version, hopefully they'll move it out of labs, It'll be in the Smart View settings and people will be able to use that, find it, and maybe they'll even have a little pop-up telling you that you can do it because people have not been able to do um, Samsung Smart View with Chromecast for quite a while. Now the last one, because I had to have a bonus one, is Gallery Labs. This is one that's not going to be an everyday user feature. You wouldn't find it unless you're really an enthusiast, but I wanted to show you guys this again. If you go into the gallery and go to settings, scroll down to the bottom, you turn on your Gallery Labs, by typing, uh, tapping the gallery version repeatedly. And if you go into Gallery Labs, there are some new features in One UI 6.0. Two of them are pretty basic, like return to viewer while exiting, show date, address, and floating view. But the last one, which I'm gonna make a full video on called Remote Gallery, allows you to access an album of the remote device in the same Wi-Fi domain. You can see, you can see them in the browser or launch Samsung Gallery. This is specifically on a Windows PC if you have the Samsung Gallery app you can do this. This is very cool. I've been using it uh, on my Lenovo computer, my PC, very fun feature. And um, I hopefully they'll move that out of labs and people can use this because there's a lot of people using PCs who use Samsung phones. And I think it'd be a great feature that they would really enjoy. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. My top seven features in One UI 6.0. I don't know. I might've given you guys eight. I didn't really count before I made the video, but I'm still going to put seven in the title because that's what I plan to call it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge shout out to Jonathan for giving us our sea creatures again to hang out. Go subscribe to the newsletter if you haven't yet. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.